books, our first song will be 338, 338. Don't have many announcements. Um, next Sunday afternoon at the Hydro Church Building, uh, daughter-in-law Cassandra, they're giving her a baby shower. So, yeah, their they're third and supposedly last one is due in April. I think that's what they told me. I, lose, I can't even keep track of the birthdays of the ones that are on the ground. So let's turn to 338, and we'll begin our worship. Lord, we come before Thee now. At Thy feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our suit disdain. Shall we seek Thee, Lord, in vain? Shall we seek Thee, Lord, in vain? Lord, on Thee our souls depend. In compassion now descend. Fill our hearts with Thy rich grace. Tune our lips to sing Thy praise. Tune our lips to sing Thy praise. In thy own appointed way, now we seek thee here to stay. Lord, we know not how to go, till a blessing thou bestow, till a blessing thou bestow. Grant that all may seek and find Thee a God supremely kind. Heal the sick, the captive free. Let us all rejoice in Thee. Let us all rejoice in Thee. 329. Song before the first prayer, 329. When the road is rough and the way is dim, Jesus knows, Jesus cares. When the darkness comes, we can go to him. Jesus knows, Jesus cares. He knows from his throne above, he cares with a perfect love. Go to Jesus for peace, go to him for rest. Jesus knows, Jesus cares. When you say goodbye to your dearest friend, Jesus knows, Jesus cares. He will comfort you until life shall end. Jesus knows, Jesus. <coughs> he knows from his throne above, he cares. With a perfect love, go to Jesus for peace, go to him for rest. Jesus knows, Jesus cares. Would you bow with me in prayer, please? Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this day that you've given us, and this hour. We pray, Father, as we go through our worship this morning, these acts that you've given us in your word that will search our hearts and bow before you in spirit and truth, that we'll repent of all of our sins, that there'll be no hindrance to our prayers and our worship and our songs. Pray that we'll do all these things in spirit and in truth. Please accept our worship, Father, as it comes from our hearts sincerely. We pray that these things that we do this morning will glorify you that in this truth and worship we will build up and edify one another. 
we may be a family, your children together here on earth, and look forward to the day that we will be with you in heaven for all eternity. Be with us this hour and all of our lives. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn to 366. 366. If you're able, would you please stand for this song and remain standing for the first prayer before the Lord's Supper? Excuse me. 366. <clears throat> there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet near to the heart of God, a place where we our Savior meet near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release, near to the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, Hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank You for allowing us to gather together around Your table to remember your son's death. We pray that we can put the cares and the troubles of this world out of our mind as we partake of this supper. We pray that we will be able to do so in a manner that is pleasing in your sight, giving you glory and honor this morning. It's in your son's name that we pray. I'd like to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the Lord, or shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. This morning, let's make sure that we examine ourselves before we partake. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for all the blessings that you give us in this life. We come before you now to thank you for this loaf that 
represents your son's body as he willingly went to the cross for each and every one of us to give of himself and we thank you for his sacrifice but Lord we also thank you for giving of your one and only begotten son so that we might have a hope of heaven we pray Lord that we can partake of this loaf in a way that we remember that we should have been there instead of him we pray all this in your son's name Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we continue our thanks now for this fruit of the vine, which we know as your children represents the blood of your one and only Son that was shed on that cross. Lord, we again thank you for that sacrifice. We know without this blood washing us and cleansing us to keep us pure in your sight, we would not have any hope for heaven living with you eternally. We pray that we will always remember that if we do fall short, that we can be, we can repent and we can be kept clean and pure in your sight. We pray that we will partake this morning of this cup in a way that's pleasing to you. It's in your son's name that we pray. have another command and that is to give and we'll do that at this time separate from the Lord's Supper let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you for all the physical blessings that you give us in this life the spiritual blessings as well we thank you for allowing us to be able to work the health that you give us the strength so that we can make money to provide for our families we pray that we can give back to you at this time for the work that we do here in this place and we pray that we can use this money in a way that is pleasing to you and that will further what needs to be done in your will it's in your son's name that we pray
Turn to 345. <clears throat> 345. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best song. Faithful loving service to to him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be. Be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. If you want to mark your in, your songbook, the invitation will be four five four. Invitation song is four five four. Song before the scripture reading and the sermon will be one twenty. One two zero. I wrote Chris down, but I think Luke's got the scripture reading. Okay, Luke will bring the scripture reading, and then Brother Jerry will bring the sermon. 120, let's do the first, second, and fourth. I'm running out of voice. Give me the Bible, star of gladness gleaming, to cheer the wanderer, lone and tempest-tossed. No storm can hide that radiance, peaceful beaming, since Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. Hold a face lamp to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till night shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal. Hold up that splendor, mighty open grave. 
Show me the light from heaven's shining portal. Show me the glory gilding Jordan's wave. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till I shall vanish in eternal day. Today's scripture reading will come out of Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first firstlings of his flock. And of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Uh, Brother Jerry. <clears throat> the scripture that Luke read is about two men in the dawn of time, the sons of Adam and Eve, and a choice that they had. We're going to talk about men's religious choices this morning. People have heard the statement attend the church of your choice so often that many believe it is actually in the Bible. Although it is not in the Bible, most people in our society accept it as truth anyway. The statement attend the church of your choice implies that Christianity is a religious cafeteria where one can choose to accept any of God's truth which he likes and reject any which does not suit his taste as he would salute, uh, select the voice of his choice in a cafeteria. Well, cafeterias, choices are fine. In fact, I like that, especially Golden Corral. But that's not Christianity. They are fine, but that approach to religion says, now listen to this, this idea to attend the church of your choice says that man, not God, is the final authority. We're saying that I am the authority, the, authority, the final authority. What about God? What about his choice? Oh, just get your get uh, 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 get you one, but don't think anything about God. Now, while it is true that there are many different churches from which to choose, the fact is that Christ built only one church. Listen to that. Let it sink in. Jesus built only, only, O-N-L-Y, one, O-N-E, 
only one church. Well, which one? Well, it's the one that you can read in the New Testament. If you are in a church that cannot find, can, that you cannot find in the New Testament, then you're in one of the devil's churches. Jesus said, or Jesus Christ said, in Matthew 16, 18, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will my church. I will build my church. Who said that? Jesus Christ said that. What did he say? I will build. I will build my church. Not any man's church. In Acts 20, 28, the Apostle Paul told the elders at Ephesus that they said that they should oversee the church which Jesus or which God purchased with his own blood. Jesus not only built it, but he purchased it with his blood and will save that only that one church. Only one. In Ephesians 5, 23, Paul wrote, For the, hus the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Well, what is what is the body? In Ephesians 1, 20, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23, he says that the church is his body. So he's going to save his church and will save only that one church. Which one? Well, he that built it, the one that built it, who purchased it with his own blood, his church, not man's church. It was. It's also true that <clears throat> men have the freedom to choose because man has made man a creature of will. But that does not. That does not mean that God accept every choice man makes. Some of those pleased God and some did not. People always have religious choices. Think uh, first about uh, Noah. Noah did not have the wood of his choice when he built the ark. God didn't live, uh, live up to uh, Noah. He didn't have a wood of his choice. God told him to make thee an ark of gopher wood. Genesis 6, 4. When God spe specified gopher wood... He eliminated all kinds of wood. Suppose Noah had reason uh, that that pine was a lot light, easy wood to work with, and would have just do will, will just as well as gopher wood. This would have been the wood of Noah's choice. But God eliminated pine. God didn't say, don't use pine. But how did he eliminate it? He said, make the ark out of gopher wood. Well, why not 
with pine, Lord. I said, go for wood. But you didn't say pine. No, I didn't. But I said, use gopher wood. But God gave Noah no choice in the kind of wood he was to use. And in Genesis 6, 22, he said that Noah, listen to this, did according to all that God commanded him. Had Noah used any other type of wood, he would not have obeyed God in order to save himself and his family from the flood's destruction. Noah had no other choice. Well, what about another example in the Old Testament? Those two men that Luke wrote, or <laughs> read, Moses wrote it in Genesis 4, verses 3 and 4. If we go back to man's earliest experience, we see that man had no choice in how he would serve God even then. Cain had no sacrifice of his choice. Cain did not have a choice of his sacrifice. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the, first, of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respected unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering. He had not respect. Have you ever wondered why God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain's? According to modern thought about the religious or the religion of one's choice, Cain's should have been accepted. God was being bigoted, wasn't he? Cain's should have been accepted by God. After all, he was sincere in offering the sacrifice of his choice. But what was the problem? It was the offering of, chains, of Cain's choice, not God's. That is the problem. But someone says, God didn't tell those men what to offer. God did tell them, according to the New Testament, Hebrews 11.4 says, by, God, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. The sacrifice was far more ex ex excellent than Cain's. Now, what does the phrase by faith mean? Hebrews 11, 4. By faith, Abel, according to the entire 11th chapter of Hebrews, it means doing what God says as God instructed us to do it. That's all it means. By faith means to doing something that God says in the way that God, it, God said it. Paul wrote in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When Abel offered his sacrifice, he did so, listen, by faith, which means he did so as God's word instructed him. On the other hand, Cain did not offer his sacrifice by faith, but 
by his own choice, not according to God's. So those things in, in the New Testament are are written that we might learn. Those things in the Old Testament are for our learning. How God dealt with men then and today he deals with man even the same way. Actually, man has only choices. And if you want to think about it, actually, man has only choices when it comes to his relationship with God. His only choices are to do what God specifies in his word. All right, that's the first choice. Or... To do what man chooses. He has only choice, two choices. Whatever he wants to do, or according to God's word, what God specifies. Jesus made it plain that the, om, uh, <coughs> the overwhelming majority of the human race will be lost. Jesus said that. Because they travel the way of man's choice. Everybody follows his own choice instead of God's choice. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find, find it. Most of the world is following their own choices. But God's way is found in the New Testament. In John 14, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. No man can come to God except with through, by me. Jesus told us. He is the way. Not my choice, but God's choice. Friends, God's word is plain regarding what he expects us to do in order to be saved. It's so, it's so simple. God's choice is that, is that we believe on him and his son Jesus Christ in Hebrews 11:6 and John 8:24 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and in John 8:24 Jesus said if ye believe not that I am ye shall die in your sins. Then we are to repent of our sins. Acts, 10, uh, Acts 17, 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So believe. Repent of your sins. That means quit sinning. That's what it means. Turn around. You're going this way. You're walking in sin. Turn around and walk in the will of God. 
then, having done that, confess yourself, your, your faith in Jesus Christ as the eunuch did in Acts 8, 34. Philip said of him, that eunuch, as they were traveling along on that road, and the eunuch said, here's, here's water, why can't I have, can, why, why can I be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered, listen to this, here's the, con the confession we must make. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And they stopped the chariot, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. He was re baptized for the remission of his sins, as Peter said in Acts 2.38. These are the things of God's choice. Peter said unto them, Repent! And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And when men obey him, he adds them to the church of his choice, not mine. God will never add you a, a, a church of man's choice. God doesn't do that. In Acts 2 and verse 47, the Lord added to the church. What church? The one Jesus said he would build that he purchased with his own blood and the church on the last day will be saving it. He will save in that church, not any other man's or any other choice. We have a lot of choices in life, but the two most important is the religious that you make. The church of your choice no. People say that as though God and his son had no choice. God has a choice. And Christ has a choice. And in his church, he will save you. If you haven't done those things that we've talked about, do it now. While together we stay. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be today. There's danger and death in delaying. Except God's saving grace. His life on the cross he has given. Oh, come while yet you may. He's earnestly pleading. Oh, make no delay. Tomorrow may be too late. Today is a day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. The judgment day, brother, is coming. Prepare ye for that day. His pardon and mercy offers. Obey while yet you may. He'll save you from sin and bring sweet peace within. Tomorrow may be too late. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. A home up in heaven is waiting. <clears throat> Today, repent and confess and be baptized. There is no other way. Give Jesus your life and thus walk in his way. Tomorrow may be too late. <clears throat>
Let's turn to number 343. 343. Let's <clears throat> sing the first and the last of 343, and then Brother Chris will dismiss us in prayer. Take time to be holy, speak oft with thy Lord, abide in him always, and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing is blessings to seek. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by his spirit to fountains of love, Thou soon shall be fitted for service above. <coughs> Let's bow our heads we go to the Lord of Prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here to gather in fellowship and Spirit and truth to worship thee, to give honor and thanks to thy word. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who went to the cross for our sins. He gave his life on Calvary that one day, if he goes there as a mediator for us to plead in our best interest that we make it to heaven one day. I pray that we come to you right now with a repentant heart and mindset that our prayers may be heard and that the things that were spoken here today whether it was in Bible class study or the message that was brought by the brother here that we would take those things and apply it to our lives to strengthen us in those areas whether we may have fallen short in to grow closer to thee whether our knowledge is not where it needs to be of thy word that we may be able to go out and teach those who are lost continue to be with this church as a whole that we all strive for the same thing as the word commands us which is to live faithful unto death and to go out and teach those who are lost Give us the strength daily to examine ourselves. That we walk this earth according to thy word and purpose. And that we seek thee according to thy word to remain pleasing in our sight as well. Continue to be with those who may not be here this morning. Whether in sickness and health. Maybe even going through spiritual weakness at this time that we will keep them lifted up in prayer that they may return to the church before it's too late continue to watch over this nation as a whole and those around the world as well that you will continue to be with them those who are of the faith that your word may be proclaimed as stated in the Bible pray that you will Keep watch over us to that next point in time. Pray you thank in Jesus' name. Amen.